Navalayo Osembo, the first person to change the footwear game, not only in Kenya, but the whole of Africa with Enda footwear, which is the very first of its kind in Africa. We dive deep and get to know what Navalayo's journey has been like, venturing into an untapped market in Africa and succeeding in it. The inspiration to start Enda has different angles, not just one singular story. One was of course, um, so I grew up in the military and I also come from a place where Eldoret is the main town. Eldoret is also known as the home of champions. And so being in both spaces allowed me to have access to at least to see them training every day, every morning. And so that inspired me to think, wait, we have a lot of really talented athletes, but when you look at how uh, for majority of them, unfortunately, their life like you make kind of money, a lot of money in the beginning and middle of your career that's supposed to last the end of your life and there's a lot of responsibilities. And so not all our athletes end up in, our, in the position that they were. And I thought surely there must be something we can do more as a country to make sure that our athletes kind of remain uh, valued up to the end of their lives. And this is in terms of not just praising them, but also making sure that they have material possessions to live a comfortable life. The other reason was also studying international development and um, international development is is one of those things you get to study about Africa a lot and I felt like the lens was about corruption, disease, poverty, things that I'm not saying are not part of Africa but they are not the African story. And so I was like, what if we actually created a, a positive story of some, something good that the world would look at and that thing would be coming from Kenya and Africa. And so putting that together in terms of thinking on um, how can I put sports and development together, Enda was the result of that. The name Enda um, came from, we were trying to find out the best name for a company that is coming from Kenya, so we were like, it has to be a Swahili word. And then we were also looking at inspiration around running. And Enda is a word that you hear a lot of Kenyans say when they're supporting their teams, whether someone is about to score a goal or cross the finish line, everybody would be up on their feet shouting, Enda, Enda, you know, and so we figured that would be the best name for, for our company, hence why we chose the name Enda. Sports is something that Nava is passionate about. She does not play, but she enjoys watching other people playing. And so for her, it was a no-brainer that she wanted to get into the athletic field. I'm very passionate about sports for a variety of reasons. One, of course, uh, sports gives us enjoyment. Sports is also a place where uh, it's about your effort. It's really about your effort and the results. And I think that playing field always fascinates me because it means anyone can come from anywhere and be a champion. Um, it's not about other external factors. And so sports motivates me for that. And as I said, I grew up around sports quite a bit, and so I knew that um, if I had to do something that I wanted to dedicate my life, I would guess, would be sports. Not from an active perspective, but just looking at how we manage the resources around it, how we can make it better for sportsmen and sportswomen, because we don't value them as much as we should. And that's basically how I settled for sports. We live in a world where women are not given as many opportunities as men are. For Nava, nothing was going to stop her. She saw her opportunity and she grabbed it. Venturing into the performance footwear industry, I don't even think we, we thought about it as venturing into an industry that, um, you know, we would be the underdogs. It was just more of looking at the opportunity and recognizing that, wait, Kenya has the best runners, but no running shoes. Like, that's absolutely insane. And then once we like, okay, let's fix this, is when we're like, oh, okay, so now we're in this industry, how do we find it? So it wasn't per se saying, okay, we're going to enter the toughest industry. It was more of like, here's a problem we need to solve, and to solve it, we need to get into this industry. But I'd say if we look at the running shoe industry, it's a very unique uh, market, especially because a lot of the newer companies are the ones that are ranking as top running shoe industries are relatively young, I'd say about a decade or 12 years and under. And so nothing, if other brands around the world could enter this market and still compete, then Enda also has a fighting chance. Before Enda I did various things, but uh, my most immediate job before that I was working uh, in project management at the United Nations uh, Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. It's a mouthful. UNOCHA is where I was working at before Enda. 
In different times of my life, I wanted to be different things. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, when I was getting international development, I wanted to have like a career in international development, whether, you know, but just thinking about the future of development and how to make it. Um, and then entrepreneurship came along, and so now I'm, I am where I am. I don't know where the future holds. <laughs> But I'd say it's not always been a dream to be an entrepreneur. It's just more of pursuing the things that interest me. And entrepreneurship is where I am currently at this phase of life. The dream was to fully source all raw materials locally and manufacture them in Kenya. But due to a few constraints, Enda is only able to manufacture the shoes in Kenya after sourcing the materials from Asia. In terms of uh, makeup of the shoe, we import parts from Asia, then we do the assembly here. Uh, of course, a big dream when we started was like, let's manufacture all of this in, in Kenya and Africa. And then now you start realizing all the little challenges and infrastructure and capacity that has made it so difficult to kind of get light manufacturing or industrialization in Africa. So we are working on it uh, and trying to figure out how to balance that with our vision of becoming a global company. But I'd say right now, the most important thing is to start and we've started and I'm proud of that. Enda is big on giving back and Navalayo has ensured that Enda gives back to the society by giving 2% of the profits that the company makes. Enda basically uh, invests 2% uh, of our revenues in community products. The reason why we do this is simple, again coming from a development background. If you look at how Africa has developed over time, it's been very, um, it's been about exploitation in the sense of you always see business as extracting and making money and the money kind of moving outside uh, the continent. And so I figured since we can experiment with the end, why not look at a, a system where community development and business development go hand in hand. So we are not saying that community development is CSR, which is corporate social responsibility after you've made your profits and done everything and you're like, yeah, you let give some money to the community. What if community development was a part of running the business and that that uh, element of the business is a core expenditure item? How would business look like when you're investing in communities? So it's an experiment we're doing, but so far we've been able to do amazing work with that. Arm of the business, we've been able to give a grant to an organization, for example, in Korogosho, that gives uh, life skills to youth who are at risk, and they do this through sports, which was very good. Uh, we've also given uh, funding to an organization in Nandi that helps uh, disadvantaged women uh, make a living. We chose Nandi because we try to be as much related to sports or communities where uh, people are in sports a lot. Uh, we gave cash grants to athletes during the pandemic and um, okay, the most recent one hasn't been announced, <laughs> but we've just given uh, some money to an organization that helps, that empowers girls through sports. So when you see that, the, the fact that we are able to do that as a local company, I'm very proud of it because I feel like that's, like, we can't, we, the existing model of development or business commerce where it's all about stakeholder management is questionable. This is stakeholder. If it's not the community, we are just making money for a small portion of people without looking at the larger community, then what kind of world would that be? Um, yeah. It's important for us to invest in Africa. Nava believes that in order for Africa to grow, every single person has a role to play. We have to invest in Africa because number one, Africa is home. Number two, if you want to think about making the world better in terms of reducing poverty, uh, making things easier and better for people, you know, people always talk about Africa from the abstract of animals, but I'm like, no, the people of Africa then we have to think about investing in it. And the investment comes in two phases. One where we as Africans recognize what we need to do, which is why light manufacturing um, industry is so important to develop. We look at places like Singapore, China, the Asian Tigers, they were where we are, but there was a, an effort to build. And so I think the challenge with us has been kind of like trying to wait for other people to you know, create those opportunities, but it's upon us to be able to do that. Uh, so it means from an entrepreneurial perspective, you build it. If it's from a financial perspective, you provide the funding. Like everybody has a role to play. But ultimately, um, I do think that 
there is a lot for Africa, a lot going on, a lot that will go on and um, it's, it's just up to us to tap into that and build. Enda is the perfect shoe for athletes for a number of reasons. One, we are basically tapping into the history, knowledge and identity and uh, skills of Kenyan athletes who are the best runners in the world and making the shoes here. We also make our shoes in accordance to the different types of trainings. So we have a shoot for we have a shoot for a short distance, long distance. We just uh, launched a shoe that's a train shoe. And so on one end we are working towards creating performance footwear. On another end we're working also locally to create um, a lifestyle sneaker. It's not for running, but at least it's kind of like trying to develop the capacity here for shoemaking. So we are sourcing locally, we are making it locally and so you know, like as a, as a company, we have both spectrums and they're trying to bring it in the middle. So they are that. In terms of cushioning, the cushioning is good. Uh, if you're trail running, the trail shoe has, is waterproof. Uh, so we do take care of the technical elements. The other thing that's important is we also try to share our history and culture through the shoe. So the shoe is not just our product, it is also giving knowledge and information and educating people so that they also remember uh, where we come from. So that's why I like it. And like we get to, you know, remind people, it's the same way that African culture is about oral history. You know, people passed down uh, information through songs, poetry, objects, symbolism, and I think and I explain that part by reminding, especially this current generation of things they may not know about that will kind of give them the pride of being African or associated with Africa. Like any other entrepreneur, Nava has big plans for Enda. She hopes to take the brand to even greater heights in future. We have very big plans for Enda to keep me at night. Uh, uh, right now we are focusing um, specifically for this Kenyan market. I want us to be able to be in spaces where people can come and touch the shoes. So we are looking at retail and getting into that space where we have a storefront. Uh, we are also looking at expanding our product offering and basically right now we are doing a lot of research and development that's going to uh, impact the shoes that are coming out in spring, that's 2023, next year. Those are going to be really good shoes, so we are investing in that. We are also deepening our, um, you know, like our market reach in Kenya, East Africa and the US right now. Uh, we are also thinking of Europe, but you know, plans are still in the works. So it's just more of getting the brand known to people, getting the brand out there, developing our product mix, entering new markets, and hopefully making more impact. My advice for aspiring entrepreneurs would be to just start. Uh, one thing I've learned is uh, the grace of God is real, very real, but you're not going to find it if you don't start. And secondly, if you start, you also attract resources because your mind is now focused to how do I solve this problem. So you're more likely to start looking for solutions or reaching out to people who might help you than when it's just a plan on paper and in your mind. The starting allows it to get out of your mind and to be on the real ground and that way you can iterate, fail, start, try, you know, like you can do things and be able to do that. It's not easy, especially when you're thinking of it from a money perspective, but as I said, when you start, you're able to talk to people who can guide you on where you go. So it's always safe that it is extremely talented, like you have to start. Venturing into the unknown can be scary for many people, but never defied the odds and took a step. Her story is truly inspirational.